Good morning. I'm joining, I'm speaking to you from uh, Rafa. You can see behind me some of the devastation caused by the war here. And in our nights, sleeping here have been punctuated continually by drones and by bombs. The situation here is absolutely desperate. People who have been displaced nine, ten times, who have lost their whole families, or whose families are divided, and they hear day in, day out of another one killed. People who are now sleeping in tents, living in some of the most degraded, undignified circumstances. Senior, senior colleagues in the hospital struggling to find a place to even uh, bathe or use a toilet. And Rafa in some ways is better than other parts of Gaza. I'm hearing from my colleague Dr. Hamis Alessi in the north who says in all of his life and all of the experience in Gaza, he never imagined anything like this. His son called me and said, Dr. Mohira, please help me. Firstly, be careful because there are bombs in Gaza. Can you believe a child less than 10 years old worrying about me in Gaza? And then he went on to say, I'm frightened. I don't like the bombs. I'm hungry, I'm starving. I don't want to die. Please come in your car and take me home. Please, please come and take me home. This Easter is a day where we think of Christ identifying with our sufferings. We think of God who came into a world where there was violence and horror and power and control where he was subjected to the most barbaric, violent death. And yet he showed that he has overcome that, that God overcomes it. Today we celebrate hope, but not hope in a, in a sort of chocolate box sense. Hope in the midst of pain and suffering and oppression and pain. Some of the doctors were Telling me of their exhaustion and their desperation and that sense of dread that is all around here in Rafa without a ceasefire. But yet I saw such humanity, the gentleness of my palliative care colleagues as they cared for patients. The generosity to us as, as uh, visitors, as those who come to help. My students from way back, excited to see their teacher, telling me I've used the skills you've told me. I put them into practice every day. Of a hand holding another for a young man who has cancer, who has been on the waiting list to be transferred out for treatment for four months. Of our neighbours bringing us food and bread out of their limited resources, they still want to give and be generous. Please do not forget Gaza and Palestine. Dr. Munter Isaac has described it as the moral compass of this world. Please listen to his Easter uh, vigil sermon. What are we going to say to our children when they ask us what we did? when Gaza's children were being killed? How are we going to hold to account those who bear responsibility and who could stop this genocide? How are our churches going to respond? And what do you need to do to encourage them to respond and to listen to some of the people who have been in this land the, the longest Listen to our Palestinian Christian friends, listen to our Palestinian Muslim friends, listen to Palestinians. 13,000 children have died. I've met many of the relatives, many of the parents. And yet we do stand with hope, stubborn hope, a candle of hope burning between hope and despair, life and death. Because we represent humanity that coming together and connectedness because we are made in the image of God and each one is just as valuable as the next. 
And so I bring you Almasia, come. Christ is risen.